Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sex and the Silver Surfers. For those of you uh, who are technophobes, Silver Surfers is the name given to senior citizens who use the internet. And sex is... Uh, well, if you don't know what sex is, um, <laughs> you'd better see me later. <laughs> Our story is set in the watershed, a retirement home for single senior citizens. <laughs> Try saying that when you've had a few babies. I'm here to guide you through uh, the strange goings-on at the watershed, so sit back and relax. Our story begins in the lounge, where a number of residents uh, are sitting around, reading, knitting, sleeping, or just deep in their thoughts. The only sound is the occasional snore and someone gently breaking wind. <laughs> <clears throat> the lounge is comfortably furnished with settees, armchairs, and tables. There is an upright piano in the corner, and through the French windows can be seen a well-kept garden. An attractive nurse enters the lounge escorting an elderly lady who has been fiddling with her hearing aid. The nurse speaks to Joan, one of the residents. Hello, it's Joan, isn't it? Yes, that's right, dear. Oh, well done. It's nice to see that you've taken the time to learn our names already. How long have you been here now? A week, is it? Yes, and I'm trying to remember all your names. Matron tells me that I have to work hard on that. Apparently, the owner of the home prides himself on the ability to be able to remember people's names even when he's only met them once. Is this true? Well, yes. Well, nearly, anyway. Uh, and, and if he couldn't remember your name, he would just say, Hello, you old fart. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who are you calling an old tart? I'm no old tart. How dare you speak to me like that? You don't even know me. It's all right, dear. Joan wasn't calling you a tart. It's just an expression used by the owner of the home sometimes. Joan, this is Wendy. As you can tell, she's a little deaf. She's from another home and is trying us out. I said you're from another home. Yes, that's right. I'm from the Cynthia Payne's home for retired maiden ladies. <laughs> it, it started as a singles club, you know, but I didn't like it there very much. The men are always coming on to you, trying to change your status. Oh, a club for mm. maiden ladies? Oh, and you say they were male members? Mm. What, what? You say they were male members? Well, of course. I didn't play with the male members. I haven't touched a male member in years. No. Me neither, dear. But, but I said, did you say they were male members? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but the men are no different in here. Nurse! Nurse! I need small boy, Agra. Uh, I had uh, better go and administer his medicine. Isn't it wonderful you can now get Viagra in the form of eye drops? Oh. Oh. Viagra in eye drops? I've never heard of that. Does it work? Well, to be honest, it doesn't do much for his sex life. Mm. It just makes him look hard. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now, Joan. Will you look after Wendy for me, introduce her to the other residents and so on? Oh, well, would you credit it? Viagra eye drops. I wonder if it makes his eyes stand out on stores. <laughs> it certainly wouldn't do anything else. <laughs> oh, now then, tell me, how did you come to find this place? Well... I found this place a few weeks ago oh. when I was swimming on the home computer. <laughs> a swimming? On a com computer? Oh, what on earth do you mean, oh. dear? Well, well, you know what I mean. On a computer. 
you, you go looking in the worldwide spider's web or something. <laughs> I don't know what she means. Uh, she means she was surfing the net. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, that's, that, that's it. But that's what I said, isn't it? <laughs> no, dear. Oh, well, not, not quite, dear. Oh, but never mind. Oh, so you found our website on the internet. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. And when I saw this was a retirement home for refined single people, I thought I'd come and have a look. Can you tell me how, how this all kind of came about? Oh, well, years ago, there was this civilised club for the unattached. Oh, the Fountain of Youth, it was called. And to be a member, you had to be between the ages of 35 and 55. Mm. Oh, we used to have a programme of dances and parties and oh. all outings going on every week. Do you know, we even had our own band. Oh, dear. That sounds like fun. It was. I used to like to play a bit when I was younger. Did we all? In fact, <laughs> yes. if I could find the right man, I wouldn't mind playing around a bit now. No, I know what you mean. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, no. anyway, carry on with your story. How well, did this whole thing come about? Well, of course, as time went on, we became too old for the club. You know, over mm. 60. Mm. And those of us who mm. hadn't found a partner who mm. wanted to maintain our friendships. Mm. So this chap called Ted came up with the idea of setting up a residential home for the senior citizens who were single. And he decided to call it the watershed. It's a bit like those retirement homes for old soldiers. Except that this one is for old singletons. Oh. Well, well, that's very interesting. But and I look forward to meeting Ted. The only person I've met an authority so far is the matron, oh. Brunhilde Coltitz. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, well, you're not likely to meet Ted. He's disappeared. D disappeared? I mean, what do you mean? Well, he organised a trip for the residents and then he got lost in the bush. Uh, do you know he uh, hasn't been seen since? Oh, I hope he's all right. I remember I got lost in Soho once. It was ever so scary. Oh. These strange men kept asking me if I was gay. <laughs> Oh, yes, I remember. I, I went out with this real raver once. <laughs> and I asked her if she was gay. <laughs> uh, uh, what did she say, Pete? <laughs> she said yes. Oh, nice. So I shot her. Oh. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, shut up, Pete. <laughs> now, Wendy, what were you going to say? Well... Uh, well, I said, this is no game. I just want to go home. They didn't half look at me strange. Mm. But anyway, I expect Ted will turn up again soon. After all, it can't be that difficult if he's lost in Shepherd's Bush. Oh, God. oh no. No, 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 dear. It's not very likely. He oh. disappeared about seven years ago in the African oh, bush. Oh, oh. All right. We presume that he was eaten by a pride of lions. Oh, oh. Ooh, and Matron, oh, well, she's been running the home ever since. Mm. What, what, what was he like, this, this Ted? Ooh, bit an oddball, really, wasn't he, Pete? Yes, yeah. yes. He, an, an enigma, if you like. <laughs> enigma, did you say? No, I never liked them. Ooh. No, dear, I'd never like them either. But no, I didn't say enigma. I said <laughs> enigma. No, I didn't say enigma. Oh, oh, dear, you've got me confused now. <laughs> I didn't say enigma. I said enigma. enigma. Oh, thank you, oh, Pete. I'm, I'm sorry. Sometimes I don't hear too well. And the batteries on my hearing aid have run down. Oh. Just like me, really. Anyway, what other things do you do here? Well, oh, I surf the net most days trying to find young yeah. women's as the juice. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's 
disgusting. Are you a dirty old man or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't uh, listen to him, Wendy. No. He's only trying to shock you. What he means by young women is anybody younger than him but over 60. Mm. And when he says seduce, he means to talk sexily to mm. because he's not capable of anything else. Yeah, well, uh, they don't call me a silver-tongued surfer for nothing. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and a walk. Don't for tell her, forget to tell her about the walk. Oh, yes. Then there's the walks. Walks? Walks? There's pushes more like. I have to go in a wheelchair because of my arthritis. Pete, will you stop interrupting? Now, as I was saying, Wendy, for those of us who can, we go on walks. Those who can't get pushed. Oh, and we have picnics as well. Oh, they're great fun. In fact, they're arranged by another group that Ted started. Oh, are they a singles group as well? Oh, no, dear. Uh, This is a group of people who all have the same name. I I told you Ted was a bit odd, didn't I? Well, have you ever heard of a chap called Dave Gorman? No. Should I have? Well, you might have seen him or heard of him on the TV or on the radio. You know, I nearly got on the radio once. Yeah, on the wireless. I went for an audition for a talent show. Oh, yes, Ben. What what happened, mate? They turned I down, didn't they? They said there wasn't much call on radio for a mime artist. (laughs) (laughs) Ben, Ben, don't you start as well. It's bad enough with Pete. Let me finish telling Wendy about Ted. Anyway, Wendy, this Dave Gorman was in a pub one day and a pal of his said that there was probably not another man in the whole world who had the same name of Dave Gorman. And to cut a long story short, and as they'd been drinking, Mm -hmm. Dave Gorman bet his mate that he could find a Dave Gorman for every card there was in the pack. That's 54, including the Jokers, isn't it, boys? Yes, yes. yes. Well, did he? Oh, yes. In fact, he found 96 of them. 96? Yeah. But he searched all over the world for them, you know. Oh. And now he's written a book about his adventures. And he appears on the television and on the radio telling people all about it. Wow. Really? I don't see what this has to do with Ted being weird. Well, Ted heard about this Gorman chap and decided to start looking for all the people with the same name as him. Yeah, yeah, but he he only found 13. Look, who's telling this story? You or me? Yeah, well, you are, but just get on with it. I mean, hearing you tell the story is like having constipation. You're painfully slow at getting it out. (laughs) Well, it's better than you... When you start talking, it's like verbal diarrhoea. You never stop, and it can be very painful. (laughs) And if you don't stop interrupting me, you will certainly have a pain in your rear. (laughs) Oh, now, where was I? Oh, um, oh, yes. Anyway, Ted's namesakes formed a club, and every year they take us out on a picnic. Yeah, and every year we get the same thing to eat. Bleeding honey sandwiches. I can't stand honey sandwiches. Oh, stop moaning, Ben. At least they take you out, which is more than can be said for your relatives. Anyway, the club has been taking us out ever since Ted disappeared. It's become like an, 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 an institution. Oh, I don't fancy that. Going into an institution? Oh, no, dear. No, you, you misunderstand. It's a figure of speech. Oh, how can I explain? Oh, it's like... Oh, like, oh, like, like they say marriage is an institution. Oh. And they do say love is blind, don't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but who wants to live in a blind institution? <laughs> <laughs> what? Pete, 
I am going to clout you with Ben Stick in a minute, oh, if you God, don't shut up. up. As I was saying, Wendy, so you see, we do keep busy. In fact, you're in luck, because later today, we're going on an outing to Nutwood Forest. Oh, oh that sounds like fun. <laughs> but why are you going to Nutwood Forest? Oh, you just wait and see, my dear. It'll be a nice surprise when we get there. That will be nice. What else do you find to do? Go on, then. Tell her about the website. Tell her about our yes, website. Yes. Oh, well, oh. yes. Well, we also have another website called yeah. Silver Surfers. <laughs> it's a sort of dating agency for people over 65. Oh, oh. That, that sounds like fun. Do you have much success matching people up? Well, yes and no. It depends on what you mean by success. We managed to match couples up all right. Oh, but unfortunately, the romances don't last very long. Oh, why is that? Are the men fickle? Frail, more like. Most of them meet a new woman, get frisky, fail at the final fence, and then fade away. Oh, well, I suppose all we can do is keep trying. Oh! Oh, here comes Rosalind, our resident celebrity. Uh, Rosalind, cooey, can you spare us a moment, dear? Uh, all right, but only a minute. I must sort out some sheet music for my next concert. <laughs> <laughs> Rosalind Conway used to be quite famous, but like all of us now, she's passed it and can't accept it. Rosalind, meet Wendy, a prospective new resident. Very pleased to meet you, Miss Conway. Did you ever play at a singles dance? I certainly did not. I've never been so insulted in my life. I'll have you know, I played the Balmoral. You played at Balmoral? Was it for the Queen Mum? No, I said I played the... Balmoral. That's the paddle steamer that oh, sails from oh. Panarf to watch it. Oh, I see. I see. Are you deaf or something? Yes, I am a bit deaf. I'm sorry if I upset you. Anyway, are you related to Russ Cordley? I oh. thought he was great. <laughs> no? no, I surely am not. I I'm a pianist. He was a plonker. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, come on, Rosalind. Don't get huffy. Wendy can't help it if she's a bit deaf. Be fair, we've all got our little weaknesses, haven't we? Vodka, gin, whiskey. Need I say any more? <clears throat> I tell you what, Rosalind, why don't you play something for Wendy and then she can see just how good you are. Oh, yes, please play for us. Well, I suppose I could, but, you know, every time I start to play, Salome starts to dance. Oh, God, here she comes now and she's in stripping mode again. <laughs> she's wearing... A tassel bra and briefs over her pyjamas. <laughs> Hello. It's all right, girls. I'm not having one of my turns. It's just that when I hear music, I want to dance and be happy. Now, where is he? Where's the birthday boy? Oh. Oh. Cool. Oh. Oh. Poor Salome's off again. What's the matter with her? Well, she's got a bit of a problem with Alzheimer's. You know how it is. Sometimes when she gets excited, she still thinks she's a stripper gram. <laughs> a stripper gram? A stripper granny, more like. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that whatever music I play, she thinks she can strip to it? 
darlings, it's because I've got rhythm in my soul. <laughs> More like ants in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think she's got a lovely pair of coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, go on, Rosalind. Play something we could all sing along to. Uh, all right, then. How about... I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts in the dairy. That's a good one. One small one, some as big as charade. Give it a twist, a flick of the wrist. That's what's the most. What is going on now? And where is Salome dressed like that? Oh, don't worry, matron. Uh, Salome was just enjoying herself. And, and no, it's not with a man this time. I go. Hmm, sweeties, I wish it was. Don't we all? Oh, I could tell you some stories about my experiences mm. with men. If only I could remember them. Mm. It's so frustrating. No. <laughs> Stop all this frivolity. It is feeding time. Snell! Snell! Uh, Let us go! It, it, um, incidentally, what's the food like here? Oh, uh, it, it's not bad, is it, boys? No, uh, no. For example, for breakfast this morning, I had boiled eggs and toasted soldiers. Oh, I love boiled eggs. Sod the boiled eggs. Just give me the soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, uh, Ben, what, 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 what did we have for breakfast today? My, my memory's got so bad I can't remember. Sorry, Pete, my memory's no better either. I, I can't remember either. <sighs> ah! Oh, yeah, I remember now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Beans on toast. <laughs> sometime later. Dillis, one of the carers in the home, enters the lounge with two gentlemen, one of whom is wearing a business suit, the other is dressed casually in a pair of yellow check trousers, a red pullover, and a check scarf. <laughs> right, this way, gentlemen. I'll tell Matron you are here. Shall I, sir? Uh, uh, who shall I say is calling? Would you like me to get you a cup of tea? Biscuits? Uh, have you eaten? Have you come far? Uh, how did you get here? Just tell the matron that Mr. De Bear and Mr. Svein of Crook, Crook, Svein and Hunt solicitors are here. Right, okay, sir. Mr. Bear and Mr. Swine Hunt are here. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's Mr. De Bear. Not beer. Oh, right. And his solicitor, Mr. Svine. S V I N E. Do you get it now? Don't worry, my dear. Lots of people make the same mistake with my name. Now, you mentioned a cup of tea. I would love one. And may I say what lovely eyes you have? Oh, <laughs> oh you are nice. <laughs> I'll go and get Matron and your tea. I do hope there's plenty of milk. I wonder if they take sugar. Here, I'd better go back and ask. I wonder if I should interrupt them. They look very busy. Here, I wonder what they are saying then. Now then, Ernest, you are 100% sure that nothing can go wrong. And all this will be mine at midnight tomorrow? My dear Rupert, the papers are with the court. Your uncle, who disappeared so tragically seven years ago, will be officially declared dead at midnight tomorrow. As you are the only known relative of the aforementioned, all you can see will automatically fall into your hands. Tell me, what do you intend to do with it? Well, keep this between us, but I've had a marvellous offer from the bingo firm Fountain. They want to pull this place down and build a bingo hall. <laughs> Obviously, with the name being the same as the organisation that some of this lot belong to, I thought it rather fitting. 
However, it does mean that these old fogies will have to find somewhere else to live. Hmm, <laughs> not easy at their age. I understand that many of them have been here for quite a number of years. I know that, but it's not my problem. They should be grateful they've had such a pleasant place to stay all these years. Don't you think that's a bit harsh, just throwing them out? Harsh it may be, but they should be used to being treated badly. After all, I expect most of them have been married at one stage in their life. <laughs> <coughs> oh, well, I suppose there's nothing I can do about it. Would you like to go and see the extent of the grounds? Good idea. Uh, we can go out through the French windows. Oh, my word. What are we going to do? Here, the residents will lose their home and be thrown out in the streets, and, and I, I will lose my job. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, uh, Dillis, dear, uh, what are you doing in here on your own? Is something the matter? Why are you crying? Has that gardener been touching you up again? No. Ah, that's why you're crying. <laughs> no, no, it's much worse than that. Oh, you mean to say no one's been trying to touch you up? No, no, I've heard, right, I've heard, you are all going to be ejaculated oh. from the old. <laughs> what? Oh. Oh, oh, no. Ejaculators? That's... Uh, don't you mean... Uh, never mind. Are you sure? Uh, uh, Dillis, just explain what you mean, darling. Oh, just listen, right? These were two... Oh, there was these two men, and I overheard what they were saying. I didn't mean to, you understand, but I was here, and, and, and they were there, and they did not hear me coming. I used to never hear my wife, neither. <laughs> what? Best time I ever had was when my wife was going. <laughs> disgusting. It's disgusting. Just listen, will you please? Right, now then. One man said to the other that he was going to inherit this home oh. as he was the nephew of the owner. He's going to sell it to Fountain. Oh. Well, that's not a problem, dear. Most of the residents were Fountain members yes. anyway. Yeah. No, no, not that Fountain. Oh. Fountain the bingo people. Oh. Oh. They are going to pull the home down and build a bingo hall. <gasps> he even said that everyone here will have to get out. Oh. I'm telling you, our number's up. Oh, oh God, God, yeah, oh, my oh, age, oh, going with my conditions. Well, who's going to take oh, me? I'm oh, going to live with my oh, daughter, quiet, which is horrible. Quiet, quiet and down, oh, all of you. Oh, now then, Dillis, tell us slowly exactly what happened. Right, OK. I was getting a cup of tea for the men who turned up. One was very good looking and said I had lovely eyes and the other was thinner and I'd let them in and what? I went to make the tea and, and asked the sea right. matron and, and I said I would get her but then I had forgotten to ask if they wanted sugar and... Uh, 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 Dillis, what? Dillis, what? slow down, dear. We never get to speed, right? <laughs> right, slowly, right? Yes, dear. A bit slower. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. right. These two men came to the door... And oh, ours to see matron. It's a bit uh, just a little faster, dear. All right. You always do this to me, don't you? Right. One said he was a solicitor. A bit quicker. He was the one who said I had lovely eyes. Oh. <laughs> and the other said he was the nephew of the owner. I let them into the sitting room. And went to make them tea, yes. but I had forgotten to ask them if they wanted sugar. So I come back in. They didn't see or hear me, but I definitely heard them. Uh, yes, dear, but what did they say? Well, their solicitor said I had lovely eyes. <laughs> lovely eyes. <laughs> yes, dear, we got that bit, but, but what else? Right, the nephew said that because his uncle was about to be declared dead, he would inherit this place and he was going to sell it to the bingo firm called Fountain. Mm. Oh. Mm. The solicitor, that's one so who said, said I had I lovely, lovely eyes. eyes. Yeah. 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 He said, oh, what about the people living here? And the nephew said, 
that he didn't care that you were all old fogies oh. and that you would have to find somewhere else to live. Oh, well, <laughs> well, can't you, oh, you, can't you just not oh, really? Old 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 well, well. Oh, oh everyone, oh. settle down. Oh. Be quiet. Oh, oh. oh let me think. Mm. We've got to get rid of this nephew. Mm. Mm. Ooh, yes. But yes. how? Mm. Ooh, we obviously need a plan B. Something that's easy to accomplish. Here, a- hang on a minute. What, what do you mean, plan B? What, what was plan A? Yeah. Well, in my experience of life, which, as you know, has been very varied, oh, yes. I've never known a plan A to work. <laughs> So, it's simpler to cut the crap and go straight for plan B. Well, but to go to plan B, you have to have a plan A to discover. Yeah, that's true. If not, then plan B is in reality plan A. My dear, it is my plan and I will call it whatever I like. In fact, if you don't stop interrupting, it'll be plan F before we get anything done. Oh, the F plan. I went on that once. Only because I got confused. I didn't realise it was a diet. It doesn't matter what we call the plan, as long as we call it something. No, 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 no. Yes. Uh, For goodness sake... Just call it the rise and fall of the Fountain Empire in the year of our Lord, 2005. Oh, it's a good one. Uh, uh, Yes, dear. Yes. Uh, That's all very well, but it's slightly long-winded, don't you think? A bit like his farts, really, but... uh, (laughs) No. They're good. I think we'll call it our plan. This sounds horrible. That sounds really nice. It does. Sort of as, as, as if it belongs to us. Yes, dear. <laughs> Our plan. Yes. Yes. Oh, Joan, I'm feeling better already. <laughs> oh, good, dear. Now, did you hear anything else or get any other information whilst you were listening to them? Well, right, yeah. That Mr. Spine, that's the one who one said, said I, I love, love your eyes. eyes. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. He said, right, that at 12 o'clock tomorrow night, the owner will have been missing for exactly seven years and could therefore be declared legally dead. Uh, And is the nephew the only living relative? That's what Mr. Svine said, and he also said that Mr. De Burr will inherit all this. Oh, well, that doesn't give us much time to do anything about it. Come on, everybody, thinking caps on. Right. Ooh. <laughs> ben? What are you doing? B- ben, w- what are you doing? I'd be putting my thinking cap on, Cor. Oh. <sighs> no, you silly idiot. Not literally. Just try and think of a cunning plan. Ha ha ha, I've got a big weapon. Have you? Oh, yes. 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 Have you? Have you really? Oh, really? Oh. big. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 I got a big chopper. <gasps> Do hang on to them. This is no time to start bragging. I'm oh. not. Look at this. I keep an axe under my blanket in case anybody should try and attack me. Oh. Yeah. I, I, and this is what I meant. I got this here dirt cleaver. What I yeah. put under my jacket. Oh, so boys. I'm, Boys, 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 you had me worried there for a moment. No, what we need is something less messy. Uh, something that could perhaps mm. appear to be an, a, an accident. Well, was it if we poisoned him? Ooh, oh, yes. Yeah, that, yeah. That's better. Like but poisoned. where do we get some poison? Think, oh. everybody, think. I know. The mole catcher. No. Right? Yeah. Uh, 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 yes, Ben, of course. Uh, but is the mole catcher poisonous? No, but his worms is. Oh. Uh. Uh. 
Well, I have never met a man with a poisoned worm. <laughs> I have seen some long ones. Lucky and girl. I have seen some short ones. Lots and of I have even seen some wiggly ones, but I've, I've never seen a poisonous one. No. <laughs> oh, Rosalind, shut up about worms. Ben, what do you mean that his worm is poisonous? Yes, yes, yes. Well... As it happens, in my younger days, because I did have younger days oh, sometimes, time, surprisingly oh, enough, yeah. I were a mole catcher, yeah, but in gosh. truth, I never caught no moles. I only poisoned them with me worms. Yeah. Well, Ben, I never knew that you were a, a mole catcher. Yeah. Go on. Well, all right, then, if I can get a word in. Well, we, we didn't really catch no moles, but we used to kill them. Oh. We would... That's all right, they's not that... Yeah. They're nice, but they ain't that nice. Especially if you've got a girt mound in your, in your lawn. You can't anyway. with bit pain. All right, all right. Let's Hurry get up. You keep interrupting, I, don't you? Right, well, anyway, um, what we used to do is we get this girt bucket of worms and we put a little bit of strychnine in them oh. and then you stir it up mm. and cover all the stuff up. You didn't need not much kill, kill to kill all the worms and then we'd find a mole run and we'd shove it up there, pass it. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh that oh, Ooh, oh, that, that must awful. have been painful for the poor little moles. Oh, God, I know what it was like with my hemorrhoids. Oh, no. oh, we, did, oh dear, dear, we didn't dear, stick dear, them oh. in the moles. We stuck them up the mole run, you daft ape. Yeah, yes, but I still don't understand how this is going to help us. Well, of course you don't, so have a listen. Well, out there in the garden is the local mole catcher. See? Oh, hey. He's doing our lawn. And as it happens, he's got a bucket full of worms. Shh! Oh, I've always wanted to get hold of his worm. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, girls, have you seen him when the sun shines and he uh, has his shirt off? Uh. Oh, slow me, shut up. Uh, carry on, Ben. Well, now then, if we could get hold of a few of these worms, just a few, mine, that's all we do need, and we can rinse them in a bit of water, like, and this will become poison, see? Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, well, right. well, sort of, but I still don't understand how that can help oh, us. Well, it's easy, isn't it? When do bear... Well, he's bound to want a cup of tea, oh. so he makes is with the poison water. It's clever, oh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's clever, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. there's just yeah. one problem, no? Oh. So, how is we going to get our hands on his worms? Mm. Well, what yeah. we need is someone to distract him while someone else grabs a handful. Mm. Now, no. who have we got? Oh, oh, Salome, I think you would be very good at distracting him. I don't think so. No? I'd rather be the one who grabs the handful. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I'd better be the one what grabs the handful, because I'm experienced at these things, you see. So am I, dear. So am I. Yes, but you ain't used to wearing marigolds, is you? Oh, have you know, in my day, we didn't wear just rubber gloves. Oh. I remember there was this oh, one God, time... Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Salome, I'm, I'm sure, Salome, I'm sure that's very interesting. But please, this is deadly serious. Oh, deadly, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, Salome, stop thinking about dangly bits. How can we get him in here? Hmm. Oh, oh uh, on second thoughts, Salome, think dangly bits. What? Yeah, stand in the window and, 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 and gyrate and, oh, and beckon him in. Are you sure? Oh, darlings, I just knew all these years of practice would come in handy. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to amuse, uh, use your imagination. Imagine a wrinkled old lady with too much makeup, gyrating in front of the window, wearing tasseled bra and pants over a pair of pajamas. <laughs> oh my God, it doesn't think bearing about it. <laughs> oh, 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 he's seen him. Yeah, now, seen now, now beckon him in. Oh, he's coming, beckon. he's coming. He's not the only one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's not me. 
Can I help you, old lady? Only you look like you're having a funny turn. <laughs> Bloody cheek. Just give your bucket to Dillis there and come with me. I need your help. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the best bit of the evening, the interval. to go. We've washed the mole catcher's wounds and we've got our poison. Now we need to administer it. Okay, Dillis, it's up to you. You're the one who makes the tea, dear, so you're the one who's going to have to make sure that Mr. De Beer gets the poisoned yeah, one. Yes. 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 Oh, no. Yes. I, couldn't, I couldn't poison nobody. Yes. Uh, look, Dillis, you're going to have to, dear. We've got nobody else. Uh, look at it this way. If you don't, you will be out of a job and a home. Uh, and let's face it, you're no Einstein, are you? Where are you going to get another job then? He's trying. Like that. He's trying. Yeah. Ben. Don't be oh. so rotten, Ben. Dillis has feelings, you know. And Dillis can't help us if she's a bit thick, can you, dear? <laughs> No, I suppose not. Here, Joe, I, I suppose Ms. Rosalind was sticking up for me, but why do I feel like I've been insulted? Oh, no, no, never no, mind dear. them, dear. I know what a lovely person you are. Uh, and the thing is, if we don't stick together, we'll all be out of a home. Oh. And you'll not only be without a home, you'll be out of a job too. Oh, so please help oh, us, yes, dear. Please. Oh, but, but I'm scared. Mm. We're, all scared. We're all scared, but we have to keep going. I remember how scared I was the first time I had sex. Oh, oh, oh you got me. Yes. I'm surprised you can remember that far back. <laughs> Don't be rude. I can remember the first time, all right. It's the last time I have ah. trouble with. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> funny that. Very funny that. Anyway, the reason I can remember the first time so vividly is because it was excruciatingly painful. Oh. Oh. Why was that then? Detailed. My God, we were so eager. I fell off the bed and landed on my coccyx. <laughs> <laughs> Just be grateful you didn't land on his coccyx. <laughs> 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 Here, I, I, I wasn't scared the first time I had sex. <laughs> well, to be honest, it wasn't until after it was over that I'd realised I'd had sex. <laughs> Silly girl. Yes, we've all been a bit like that, yeah. What do you mean? How can you not know you're having sex? <laughs> Well, it was at school, right, behind the bike shed, and he told me he was teaching me deep breathing exercises. I told you she was no Einstein, didn't I? Oh, can we cut out all this talk about sex and get on with the matter in hand? Oh, can we look here? Am I aging with my conditions? All I can do is talk about sex. Oh, shut up, Pete. Now then, Dillis, you know how serious this matter is. Will you help us? All right. Oh, good. But don't blame me if something goes wrong. No, oh, sure, sure. All of you, here comes the matron of the business. Oh. Now, then, tell me who you are and what are you doing snooping around the grounds. This grounds is the private property of Mr. De Beer. We were not snooping around. My name is also De Bear. I'm Ted De Bear's nephew. Well then, Mr. De Bear, please explain why you are here and what you want. Of course, Matron. But please, 
Call me Rupert. <laughs> Rupert? <laughs> I call you? Metron, of course. We don't allow any frivolity here. Now, explain yourself and who is this man you are with? And, and I ask you again, who uh, and what do you want? I am Ernest Swine of Crook, Crook, Swine and Hunt. Solicitors. What did you say? I'm a partner in a firm of solicitors called Crook, Crook, Swine and Hunt. It's a big firm and has a lot of family members in it. That's a problem. But I'm the only spine. <laughs> the others are all crooks and hunts. <laughs> oh, for the moment there, I thought you were there <coughs> mocking me. Oh, no, dear lady. Uh, we would not do that. <laughs> I'm here today in my official capacity as executor of the estate of the late owner of this property. What do you mean, the late owner? He is not dead. Just missing. Oh, yes. As you know, the owner of this establishment, Ted de Bear, disappeared seven years ago tonight. This is his nephew, Rupert de Bear. <laughs> And tomorrow he'll be declared legally dead. Hmm. He looks very much alive to me. <laughs> no, no, not Rupert de Bear. I meant his uncle, Ted de Bear. <laughs> When that happens, this property and all the grounds will pass to Rupert de Bear as his only surviving relative. Hmm, I see. I think we should have a cup of tea and discuss this matter. Gentlemen, can I offer you a cup of tea? Yes, please. And may I say what lovely eyes you have? <laughs> Yes, I'll have some too if you've got Earl Grey. He's a posh bugger. Yes, we do. Dillis, go and make a cup of tea, please. And make sure Mr. De Beer has Earl Grey. Right, uh, yes, right. Make sure I'll go right away. Dillis, Dillis, here's your chance. You know what to do. Make sure that Mr. De Beer's tea is made with a poisoned water. I suggest you use the little yellow teapot in the kitchen so that you don't know the little one, so you don't get it mixed up with all the others. How long have you worked here, Matron? Hmm, um, I think about ten years now. Oh, my husband and I came from East Germany after the ball came down. So you are married, then? Oh, yeah. My husband works here as a as gardener, and in his spare time, he repairs watches and clocks. Oh, that's very interesting. Is he good at that? Oh, yeah. Well, we Germans are all good at watch repairs. Why is that? Because we had making ways of making some talk. <laughs> that is German joke. Very funny, no? No. 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 Oh, where is that girl with the tea for three? Ah, here she comes now. Uh, no, no, I think it's much better to have tea for two and two for tea. La, 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 Yes, well, uh, that was very nice. 
Now, do your residents often break out into song? Oh, yeah. It is better than them breaking into the wind, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but this singing, it can be most annoying, especially when you are not in the mood. Uh, the mood, yes, I know. I'm in the mood oh. for love. La, 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 la. No, 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 Miss Rosalind. Please, I beg of you, no, no more music. Uh, uh, fine. Till this fight, did you not bring the biscuits? Oh, oh, oh I, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'll go back and get them immediately. Nurse, uh, will you bring the trolley over by here? Oh, no. She's mixing up the cups. No, I don't know which one is which. Oh, oh Dillis, what are you doing, you stupid girl? Um, uh, um, I, I think the milk's gone off. <laughs> I'll take these away and get some more. Oh, oh, come along. We will have the tea in my office. Yes, of course. Poor girl, she does seem a little simple. Why on earth did you employ her? Well, it was not my choice to employ her. It was your uncle, uh, Mr. De Beer, and he made it clear that she must be employed in and at the watershed. I think it was because he felt sorry for her, and she was cheap labour. That's strange. Mind you... Uncle Ted was an old character altogether. Oh, yeah, well, what yes. do you expect with a name like his? Mind you, being Rupert the Bear couldn't have been easy. <laughs> Don't understand what you mean. <laughs> oh, never mind. Let's just go and have tea in Matron's office. Oh, oh. bugger. Oh. That stupid girl. There was only enough poisoned water for one cup of tea. So, there goes plan B. Yes. Our plan, you mean? Yes. Does it matter what it's called? It's failed. Yes. I, 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 I suppose it was the F plan after all. Get it for... for, 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 for. Oh, I've forgotten. For failed. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, are you if we left it to Dillis? She'd make a rotten mess of it. Oh. What are we going to do now? I mean, what are we going to do? We'll have to think of another plan. Oh. Anyone got any bright ideas? Because after all, I thought of the last one. Oh. Actually, I can only focus on the name of the bloody plan. What can oh. we call this one? Oh, look, Dillis is back. Oh, Hello, darling. Here, I, I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry, but somebody mixed up the cups and I didn't know which one was which. Oh, oh don't worry, Dillis. It really wasn't your fault. No, it wasn't. It, it's no use crying over spilt milk, or in this case, spilt tea. Get it? Laugh. Uh, <laughs> uh, then uh, I can understand why you were a mime artist and not a comedian. I don't know what you mean. I was only trying to inject a little humour into the situation. Well, it's a pity there's no poison left because perhaps we could inject him with that. Uh, well, there isn't. Oh. But hang on a minute. What? Rebecca, yeah. mm. you're a nurse. Mm. Can't you get your hands on some poison? Oh, yes. Certainly yeah. not. Matron keeps all that sort of thing under lock and key. Oh. And anyway, don't include me in any of your harebrained oh. schemes. Oh. I don't want to be involved. Oh, sweetie, oh, sweetie, you already are. Yeah. It was your fault that the last plan didn't work. And if we ever get caught, we will say you were mm. in on it too. Mm. So there. Yeah. Mm. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? Mm. Oh, yes, we would. Yes, we would. Yes, we would. Yes, we would. Who yes, would believe would. sweet, frail old mm. people like yeah. us could oh. murder anyone? Oh. Uh, yes. Uh, we probably wouldn't want to involve you, Rebecca. But the thing is, Salome's right. We're old and doddery oh. and forgetful. Yes. And we might just forget that you weren't involved. Mm. And we might even get so confused that we might think that you were the ringleader. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, in any case, you do stand to lose your job if De Beer sells the home. So, dear, 
Are you prepared to help us? Oh, you crafty old buggers. <laughs> but I suppose I must help. I can't afford to be out of work again. Good girl. But I don't say that helps a lot if you can't get hold of any poison. Mm. Well, mm. there might just be a way of injecting him without using poison. Oh. Well, what do you mean? How can you kill someone with an injection without something in the syringe? Ah, but that's the whole point. There is always something in the syringe. Air. Oh. If you inject someone directly into an artery with air, it causes a blockage called an embolism that can cause death. Oh. 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 Hmm. The only problem is, how do we get him to agree to have an injection? I suppose if he were asleep, I could do it, but he doesn't live here. I, I, I say, what if we were to tire him out so that he wanted a nap? Oh. Well, I know I'm going to regret asking yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> But just how do you propose to tire him out? Well, I don't think I've lost all my sex appeal. Oh, God. <laughs> if I get him to make love to me, I can guarantee he'd need a nap afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Hospitalised? <laughs> uh, it, it's a nice idea, Salome. Oh. Uh, but be realistic, dear. He's not going to fancy you, or me, or anybody else here for that reason. We're all too old and decrepit. Oh. Well, I could try. Here, we could tell him it was deep breathing exercises. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, Dennis. I don't think that would work either. Although, the idea of seduction is good. In my experience, most men fall asleep after sex. During it? In before. fact, these days, most of them do during mm. sex. <laughs> and before. And before. And before. Now, what we need is someone who is young mm. and attractive oh, to yeah. seduce, seduce him. him. Mm. Oh, damn. I know what's coming next. Why on earth did I let myself become involved? You don't really expect me to seduce him and inject him. Oh, why yes. not? After all, you're really doing him a favour. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you could say you're giving the little prick a big prick. Oh, <laughs> 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 Very funny, and how and where do you think I'm going to be able to get him alone for all this to happen? Oh. She's got a point there. Ah, but I think I've got the solution to that. And yeah, what's that? Well, you remember me telling you about this group that Ted started, where all the members have the same name, and they take us out every year? Oh, yes. And do you remember me telling you that if you go down to the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise? Yes. yes. Well, it's because today is the day that Ted did <laughs> Rebecca, you can take Rupert de Vere Rupert. into the woods, seduce him, and when he falls asleep, inject him with the air. <laughs> All we have to do is to make sure that he's invited to come along on the picnic. I'm sure he will come if we tell him it's honey sandwiches. Oh. Come on, everybody. Let's go and find him. Oh, yeah, he's a, that's a really good idea. I mean, no one could refuse Rebecca. Oh, I fancy her myself. Oh, a bleeding waste of time, wouldn't yeah, it, eh? It was, wouldn't it? Oh, God. Well, it's not my fault. How was I to know he was gay? <laughs> mm. 
but I suppose we should have known by the way he's dressed. Um, yes. Um, well, it can't be helped. We'll just have to think of something else. Maybe, just perhaps, it might be third time lucky. Fancy, imagine him not fancying Rebecca. He must be round a bend. Yeah. <gasps> That's yes. it. What? That's it. What, darling? What is? Round's bend. Too fast. No brakes for Nito. Look, he has to leave here by the cliff road, and you know there's that nasty bend. Yes. Well, if he took it too fast and he didn't have any brakes, who knows what might happen? It's a big drop and long, long, long way down. I don't think anyone would survive that. Brilliant. Yes, yes, yes. Who's going to get under the car and tamper with the brakes? Uh, here, don't look at me, right? I don't know nothing about cars, no. And I just made a mess of our plan and, and uh, I'm not doing this. Oh, it, it's okay, it's okay, Dillis. Uh, right. Do any of you know anything about cars? Nope. No, but I know a man who does. Ooh, quickly, tell me who it is before he gets too old. Don't want his M.O.T. to run out. Oh, for goodness sake, Salome, this is serious. So was I, so was I. So who is it? Pete Passover. Oh. He used to be a mechanic. Oh, look, he seems to have fallen asleep. Somebody wake him up, Pete. Pete, 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 Peter, wake up. Pete, Pete, come on, come on. Pete, wake up, Pete. Wake up. He's looking very pale. Maybe. Maybe he's kicked a bucket. Get it? Pale bucket. There's no time for jokes, Ben. Oh, no. Pete passed over. Has passed over. Oh, bloody hell. Just our luck. He's caught. Oh no, he's dead! Dead? Dead? Who's 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 dead? I thought you were dead, you silly old sword. Fancy frightening us like that, my gosh, Pete. Oh, what are you all talking about? Oh, never mind her, Pete. Is it true you used to be a mechanic? Oh, yeah, yes. Why? We need someone to fix the brakes on Rupert de Beer's car. Yeah, well, why would we want to fix the brakes on his car? Uh, I thought we was trying to get rid of him, not help him. Uh, oh, yeah. Silly old duffer, you've misunderstood. We oh. want you to fix his brakes so that they don't work. Now, can you do that? Oh, yes, I see, yes. Well, I know how to do it, but whether I can do it is another matter. It's me arthritis, you see. You know I can't get out of this chair without help. And there's no way I could get under a car. Oh, but Pete... Do you think you might be able to, to teach someone else to tamper with the brakes? Yeah, well, well sure. Yeah, yeah, well, what, what make is it? Oh, well, I saw them arrive in a blue rover. Oh, yes, a rover. <laughs> well, that's no problem. <laughs> Rovers is always... A... Rovers is always having problems and troubles, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> All we really need is someone young enough and agile enough to get under it. Who have we got? Mm. Not me. Oh, no. No, I've already said not me. Oh, don't. I can't do it. I'm not doing it. No, don't worry, Dillis. We'll sort it out. Right. Rebecca, my dear. <laughs> Rebecca. You're the only one really suited to this task. Are you prepared to help us? Oh, excrement. Oh. Well, I suppose I'm in so deep now, I don't think I have a choice. Oh, look, Rebecca. You, you take me up to my room, darling, and I'll show you some magazines I've oh, got. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you dirty salt. What? I hope you're not going to try and corrupt her with those sexy thingy oh. magazines of yours. I'm talking about car magazines, you daft old bat. <laughs> Well, well, what I would like to know is how you know he's got sex in thingy magazines. Yes. Uh. Never mind that now. Rebecca, let's go and have a look at his car magazines.
some time later. The residents are sitting around in the lounge when Rebecca enters. She has dirty hands and face. Her hair is all over the place, and there are two black handprints on the rear of her uniform. Don't ask, just don't ask. Suffice it to say, I've done the job and not without a lot of harassment from Pete. Oh, well done, Rebecca. You're so versatile. Oh, what about me? I had a hand in things as well. Yes, yeah, so we can see that. <laughs> you can say that again. He was feeling my bum as I bent down to get under the car, the dirty old sod. <laughs> well, 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 never mind. Forget about that now. Um, um, I, I look out the window. He's driving off. Oh, wait, oh. Do you know, we forgot about the big bend at the bottom of the drive. You know, by the big barn. Oh, 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 oh look, he's, oh, 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 he's, 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 he's been crashed into the barn. What's all this commotion about? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Oh. DeVere. Uh, we didn't think you, I mean, we, we, what? 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 we're... What? Did we just see you yeah, drive we, off yeah. a crash? We well, obviously you didn't. I'm here. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what sort of rover you got? 600. Why do you ask? Oops. Oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I'd better go and see if there's anything I can do. Hmm. I can see what's happened. Rebecca has tampered with the wrong car. But you just told me it was the Blue Rover. I meant the Blue Rover 600. Which one did you tamper with? The Blue Rover 200. Oh, Oh, no. What? Oh, no. You do know who the Rover 200 belongs to, don't you? No. No? No. I'm sure you do. No. It's a matron. And here she is now with the solicitor and Mr. De Beer. Oh. What happened, matron? Well, I was driving my car down the drive on my way to the village to get some of the milk. As the bottom of the drive, my brakes did not work. Oops. Luckily, I was able to steer the car into the barn and it, the bells obey to bring the motion. As I hit the beams, all around me crashed and all around me had, I saw my life flash before my eyes. Whoa. Oh, I had a great time. <laughs> Suddenly, this box landed on the bonnet of my car. Well, you were very lucky, my dear matron. But I must say that that is a rather strange-looking box. I wonder what's inside. As it was in the barn, and the barn is on my property, I think I should investigate. <laughs> it might just be a hidden fortune. Oh, no, no. Now, this property does not become yours until tomorrow. So, as I have power of attorney for your Uncle Ted, I shall open the box. Oh. Open the box. Somebody open the box. I don't care. Oh, the open the box. But just get me the drink. <laughs> yes, of course, matron. You shall have a brief brick. I will examine the contents of the box. Oh, I love anything like this, don't you? Hmm. Oh, this looks like a will. Oh, oh. oh gosh, you're never going to believe this. No. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we will. Yes, we will. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen is the last will and testament of Mr. Ted de Bear. <gasps> Gosh. Goodness gracious. Oh, my word, this changes everything. Oh, what? what does it say? Well, it appears that you're not the only living relative. It seems that Ted de Bear had an affair with a Miss Ruby Lou. Oh, <laughs> And they had an illegitimate child. Listen to this. 
If Killer, this we... is being read, then I'm presumably dead. <laughs> oh, oh, stop. That Get rhymes. Get on with yeah. it. Yeah. I've had a good life and did all of the things I wanted to do. But I do have one huge regret. A long time ago, a long time ago, I fell in love. A long time ago. Really? I fell in love with a Miss Ruby Lou. We were deliriously happy and planned to marry. In a moment of unbridled passion, Ruby became pregnant. We were ecstatic. We planned to marry before the baby was born. However, however, one day Ruby was pushing her bike through a through a railway crossing when a runaway train came over the hill. And he flew. <laughs> because she was pregnant, Ruby was unable to get out of the way quickly. And the train struck her a glancing blow. Oh. She was not seriously hurt. But the shock triggered the premature birth of the baby. Tragically, tragically, Ruby died giving birth. I was devastated. And because the hospital... I was devastated, and because the hospital said... said Ruby would have been all right if she hadn't been pregnant. I blamed the child for her loss. I decided I wanted nothing to do with the baby. And because we weren't married, it was, it was sent to an orphanage and grew up not knowing of its origins. Although I didn't want to see the baby, I kept in touch with the orphanage and monitored the child's progress. Before I go on my travels, I feel it is important to let the world know that if I do not return, I bequeath all my goods, property, and worldly possessions to my one and only issue. Bless you. I know my child will be traceable because I have ensured that there is a connection to my establishment the watershed. The name of that child is... Is it Spirit Lads? Oh, it's not Matron, is it? No, not Matron. Then it must be Nurse Love Child. I knew that was a made-up name. No, not Nurse Love Child. It is... Dillis. Dillis? Here, why are you all looking at me? I, I didn't do anything. Oh. Uh, don't you get it, Dillis? You now own this home. Oh. You, you own the watershed. Yes. Yes. yes, it would appear that your surname is Lou, not Pandy. <laughs> oh, I get confused now. You're looking quite flushed. <laughs> It must be a chain reaction. Get it? Flash! Chain reaction. <laughs> oh, well, it's another joke down the toilet. <laughs> but, 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 here. How is this possible, right? Because I am just a poor little orphan. Oh. Yes, Dillis. But didn't you start work here about seven years ago? Just how did you get this job? I can explain this. Just before Mr. De Beer went on his travels, he asked me to contact the orphanage and arrange for Miss Dillis Lou to be employed by the home. I was a little surprised at the time, as he had never shown any interest in the orphanage before. However, as he was always a strange man and the boss, I went along with it. I have had to suffer the 
consequences ever since, as you all will know. Uh, matron, uh, I would be careful what you are saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you're talking about your Ooh. new boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have always said what a wonderful girl oh, she yeah. is. Yeah. 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 This can't be so. I will contest the will. Who on earth puts a will in a box in a barn? Nobody in their right mind. I will be the owner, and I'll contest the will in court. Oh. Rupert, think about it. You cannot win. From what the matron has told us, your Uncle Ted knew exactly what he was doing, and no doubt the records at the orphanage will enlighten us further and prove that Dillis is the daughter of Ted de Bear and Ruby Lou. We will see. <laughs> you will be hearing from my solicitor. <laughs> but I am your solicitor. <laughs> Just call me on Monday morning and I shall write to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not staying here to be insulted. I'm going to find another solicitor. Uh, well, it looks as if our troubles are all over. Dillis won't let us down, will you, dear? Oh, I suggest we all have a drink to celebrate before we go into summer. Oh, let's open the bubbly. Come on, everybody, let's go. Here I shall. You're now a very wealthy young lady. This home produces a very good income. Here, I'm ever so shocked. <laughs> really? Here, it's a bit like winning the lottery, isn't it? <laughs> well, yes. However, there is a lot of work in running a home like this, you know. Why not consider the offer from the bingo people? Wouldn't you prefer to sell the home, take your money, and perhaps go on a world cruise? After all, you have lovely eyes. <laughs> and you're sure to find a suitor very soon. Oh, I, I couldn't do that. Not all these lovely people. Not after the way they treat me. And how do they treat you? Here. Now you come to mention it. <laughs> yeah, they treat me as their dog's buddy. How much did you say the bingo people were offering? <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> Tell me more. We are, don't have a bike shed, but we got a lovely, cosy garden shed. <laughs> Sex and the Silver Surfers was performed by Abergavenny Theatre Group on Saturday, the 30th of July, 2005 at the Abergavenny Borough Theatre. The cast was as follows. Rebecca Lovechild played Helen Geraghty. <laughs> Joan Ringleworth by Marilyn Bakewell. Ben Hurley by Chris Gray. Salome Stripoli by Sue Christian. Pete Pastover was played by Les Hayes. Wendy Whitless was played by Liz Gallagher. <laughs> Rosalind Conley was Louisa Connolly. <laughs> Dillis Pandy was played by Sam Christian. <laughs> Hilda Cold Tits was played by Janet Richards. Ernest Swine was played by John Geraghty. <laughs> Rupert D. Bear was, was played by Rob Tolman. <laughs> I am Bryn Griffiths, your announcer. The music was composed and played by Anuska Lester.
The play was adapted and directed by Don Balkwell. Who <laughs> Uh, the Watershed was written by Don Balkwell and Jane Laurenti.